This here is called Kellett detection paper. It is what military personnel use to quickly determine what type of chemical warfare agent they are dealing with. When it comes into contact with liquid HD, or mustard, as it is more commonly known, it'll turn red. When it comes into contact with VX nerve gas, it'll turn slowly dark green to black. When it comes into contact with GB, or sarin, it'll turn yellow. Now, of course, these aren't real chemical warfare agents. Relax. They're <laughs> specifically designed stimulants. But maybe for a split second, some of you in the audience experienced the fear that this was real. And it is that fear, and more importantly, how to combat it, that I would like to focus on. In the wake of the 9-11 attacks, the international security community started to worry about weapons of mass destruction. Where I work, we tend to call these CBRN threats. CBRN stands for chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear. The fear that these type of weapons instill can lead to grave consequences. We all know that shortly after 9-11, Iraq was invaded because they allegedly possessed these weapons. Another example of the impact that the use of these kind of weapons can have is, of course, the current situation in Syria. And on a certain level, this makes sense. The physical and psychological consequences of an attack with these kind of weapons are so massively devastating, they seem to justify the huge efforts and investments being made to counter them. Most of these efforts, however, tend to focus on the prevention of an incident and not so much on dealing with the consequences. Now, I'm not disputing that prevention beats having to deal with the consequences, but I do think that when something does happen, being prepared beats not being prepared. You may ask yourselves now, how often does an incident of this nature even occur? Well, let's take the Netherlands as an example. A small country, probably not a lot happens here, right? In 2013, depending on your definition of CBRM, between 10 and 15 incidents occurred in the Netherlands, some of which were well documented in the media. In April 2013, there was a sarin scare near Maastricht. Supposedly, some glass vials containing sarin were buried somewhere in a forest, so the police decided to go digging for it. Now, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't go about digging for glass vials of sarin like this. <laughs> it is that kind of inexperience, that lack of knowledge, not so much the stuff itself, which scares me, by the way. So, knowing that these incidents do indeed occur, what can we do about it? Well, if the people who have to handle these kind of situations, what we call first responders, like a policeman or a fireman, know what to do in such a situation, I, as a citizen, would feel more secure. This then just leaves the issue of how to train and prepare such first responders for these kind of situations. And as I mentioned earlier, the psychological burden of having to deal with these kind of substances is not to be underestimated. So what kind of confidence-building measures can we use then? I started this pitch with a demonstration of simulants, which we use to train and familiarize first responders with the correct characteristics of these materials. But this is only the first step. We then start training them with the actual substances, like chemical warfare agents, and I mean real chemical warfare agents. We put these first responders in a situation outdoors, where the threat, the psychological burden, and the fear is real. We do this because we think this is how we can best ensure that whenever an incident does occur, that first responder, having experienced it, knows he or she is capable of handling it. Knowledge, experience, these have always been the best answers to conquer any type of fear. 
And I hope I've been able to convince you that such knowledge and experience is not only advisable when it comes to CBRN, but very much available, in the end, making you more secure.